So, welcome everybody to our webinar this afternoon. Um, this is a webinar surrounding your skin health after having a total laryngectomy. Um, or a different sort of laryngectomy, you might not have had a total laryngectomy, but um, after your surgery. So, um, if we flip on to the next slide, Claire, please. So, just today, we're just going to cover um, a few little topics surrounding your skin. So we're going to look at kind of how much um, of a problem skin irritation is for laryngectomized patients, um, some of the causes and contributors of skin health issues, how to manage uh, skin irritation and improve HME use for better lung health. Um, and then we've got just a little bit about uh, different types of technology um, within some products. Um, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end um, and that's where hopefully we can we can answer some of your questions or at least point you in the right direction. Um, so we'll pop onto the next slide, please, Claire. So my name is Jess. I am the lead nurse here at ATOS. Um, and today I am joined by Masvita. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and <laughs> Masvita is one of our field nurses and she covers um, kind of the north. Yeah. Area, but lots, lots of areas in the north, Sheffield, those kinds of places. So, uh, some of you might be familiar with Masvita if she's been out to see you. Uh, good. So let's pop on to the next slide, please. So just before we get started, we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so this is a corporate presentation from ATOS Medical Group. Nothing in this presentation provides any diagnosis, clinical advice, indication, guide, warranty or guarantee. Nothing in this presentation can substitute individual advice or guidance from a qualified healthcare professional. Um, so with that being said, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've had a couple of people just come on since I mentioned it, but I think for ease, um, please use the chat box um, at the top of your screen if you want to kind of um, type anything, communicate anything, um, and we can uh, take, we'll keep monitoring that throughout the, the presentation. Um, and then as I say, at the end, we'll have um, some time for some questions and, and a little bit of discussion. And I think that we'll be able to, don't quote me on it, but I think we might be able to give you access to your microphones and cameras if you want it. So um, so we'll, we'll touch on that at the end. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. So let's pop on to the next slide. And I'm going to hand over to Masvita. Thank you, Jess. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. So first, we're going to start with looking at how much of a problem skin irritation is for anyone living with a laryngectomy. Next slide, please, Claire. So there has been some research done um, that showed that patients do get irritated skin um, from wearing adhesives, which some of us call base plates. And also patients do struggle to find products that actually fit their stoma. And this is for various reasons. So we're going to look at two scenarios. One is about skin irritation and the other one is about what is called stoma topography. So this is just how your stoma looks, um, the way it's shaped or your contours and things like that. So these two pictures are from um, two patients that we have changed their name. Um, just to protect their identities. And first of all, we're going to look at Ava, um, who's had skin irritation. And Ava's adhesives um, did fit her stoma shape. And this is the first picture that we're looking at. Um, and she did have irritation because she was wanting to wear the base plates 24 hours a day. So as you can see, her stoma was often red, and sore as well as itchy and this was from like the base plate or the adhesive material so it ended up being that she needed to use a cream as well as an antibiotic ointment just to help smooth the skin so just looking at skin irritation alone for Ava the problem was that the adhesive was irritating and also uncomfortable to wear for long periods and with the second picture, we've named this patient John. 
And he has tried many products, but just could not find an adhesive that could fit his stoma just because of the contours and how deep his stoma is. So because he was relying on an HME to be able to have a voice, the HME that you press down to be able to have a voice, he was unable to communicate. So you can see that um, not being able to have an adhesive that fits was affecting the way that he would communicate. So with John, the issues were that the adhesives were not sticking to his skin properly and being able to cover the whole stoma so that you could have a good seal enough for him to have a voice. So not having the right shape um, for his stoma was um, something that was a challenge for him. Next slide, please, Claire. So there was a survey done by ATOS Medical in 2015, which brought together 729 patients. And this was not just in the UK, this included patients from France, as well as from the US. And of these 729 patients, um, we did find that 47% of them um, communicated that they would take a break from using an adhesive or a base plate um, and an HME as well because of skin irritation. And of, of these 729 patients, um, a large percentage, which is 87%, did say that at night they would take a break from wearing a base plate. So just looking at these two um, pie charts, these diagrams, the first one that's divided into two sections, like a gray one and a red one, we did ask the question whether um, patients were taking a break from using their adhesive slash base plate um, as well as HME. And in the red zone, which is 47%, um, those patients answered that yes, they did take a break, whereas 53%, which is the gray zone, said that they did not take a break. And in the second pie chart, um, which is divided into three sections, we can see that um, of those patients that did take part in the, in the survey, 61%, which is a large fraction, the red zone showed that during the night people would take a break um, from wearing their base plate or their adhesive as well as their HME just to give their skin a break and you can see that a small percentage which is the gray one they only did that during the day. Next slide please Claire. So I've got a few more little diagrams and graphs as well. I hope I won't bore anyone with these. <laughs> so we were just looking at um, talking to patients. We just found that um, although people do trust their clinicians to get advice um, about their skin issues and everything to do with their laryngectomies, um, some patients did not report issues that they may have. But looking at the first section where there's the little bars in just red and gray, it shows that as much as 71%, which is a really high percentage, um, they did say that they trusted um, their doctor or their surgeon to talk about um, any issues that they were having um, with their laryngectomy. And the list goes down because you do have access to your speech and language therapist, you've got your ATOS representatives, as well as your ATOS nurses, and some people do speak to their spouses and their families as well. And of that number, it was 29%, which is a very good number to know that people are actually talking um, to their loved ones about what they're going through with their laryngectomy, um, as well as talking to other people who've had laryngectomies as well, which is 24%, that's just almost a quarter of people saying that they do find um, help from people who've had laryngectomies as well. Um, next slide, please, Claire. So we do find that skin irritation can lead um, to people abandoning using their HMEs. And when this happens, we do know that it will affect how well your lungs are working 
and it just has a knock on in a knock on effect on a lot of things um, surrounding your day to day life. So um, with this flow chart here, we can see that once skin irritation happens or discomfort, the next thing is we're thinking about giving our skin a break. And then once we've done that, it means we're not using our HMEs or some people call them filters um, as much as we should. And then, like I said, it reduces um, your pulmonary health, just the general health of your lungs. Next I think this slide. is some, something we see really commonly, don't we, Masvita? It's, um, you know, it's something that we spend our days trying to trying to work through with our patients. Exactly. That we see. <laughs> yeah, because you do find that once um, an HME is not being used as it should, like 24-7, you start yeah. struggling with things like mucus production, coughing, mm -hmm. and then you don't want to go out. You just stay in the house because you're having to manage this. So um, it, it's quite a challenge, skin irritation. Mm, definitely. Mm. Next slide, please, Claire. So we're going to look at what can cause or contribute to skin health issues in these next few slides. Next slide, please, Claire. So before we go into that, I will just briefly talk about the structure of our skin, and I won't go too much into detail with that, but we do need to know what healthy skin is like. So most of you will know that our skin, it's actually the largest organ of our bodies, and it's got three main layers that you can see in that diagram that we've put there. So you've got your top layer, which the scientists have called an epidermis. And then we've got our second layer, which is in the middle. It's called dermis. And then you've got the third layer, which is called the hypodermis. So all these layers have got really important functions, which include regulating our body temperature, as well as being able to warn us about um, any harm that's happened to our bodies, like if you get um, a pin prick, a needle prick, um, if you get burnt, um, our skin is responsible for sending that message to our brain so that we know what to do. And our skin really protects us as well. So imagine if we were walking around without our skin on, we're just exposed and we can end up with things like bacterial, fungal or viral infections. So just briefly looking at the top layer, which is the epidermis that offers protection that we were talking about, of course, because it's protecting everything that's on the inside. And this is where cell renewal happens as well. Our skin is constantly um, renewing. That's why our skin sheds. And also this is where um, what's called the immune response happens. So the protection against bacteria, fungus, and viruses as well. And an interesting fact as well, the cells that make um, the pigment that gives us our skin color, these cells are located in this layer as well. And then we get our second layer, which is the dermis. This is where our collagen and our elastin is made. So this just gives our skin that stretchiness that it has and that youthful look as well. And this is where our hair is rooted and it's fed so that it grows. And we also get like a really important function in this second layer. This is where our nerves are located um, that alert us to whether we've been hurt or harmed. And also our sweat glands are located here as well. And there's loads of blood vessels in this layer. And then the last layer, the third layer, which is called the hypodermis, um, some people refer it to as the fatty layer because there's quite a lot of fat in there. You find that your connective tissue is there. So this is the stuff that um, attaches our muscle to our bones and to our skin as well. And a lot of blood vessels branch from this layer as well. So knowing all these functions happen in our skin, it tells us that if our skin is irritated, we lose all these important functions, especially the protection against um, bacteria, viruses and fungus as well. 
And also, if you do lose your top layer, which is your epidermis, if you lose that, it means your second layer is more exposed. And that's why if we get a wound, if anyone touches it, it's really, really painful because now your nerves are really exposed. So that's just um, the basics around what healthy skin is and what irritated skin is. All right, next slide, please, Claire. So knowing all this about the skin, we're going to look at a few different things that can go wrong with it. And we're going to talk about mechanical skin stripping, as well as what's called maceration and also contact dermatitis. So these three images just kind of like show us what those things look like. And I know we've got a picture of feet there and we're not talking about podiatry or feet today, but it just lets you know what maceration is. Um, when you've had a bath and you've been sat in it for a long time and you're exposed <laughs> to water, our skin, like our fingers and our toes, they start to get all wrinkly. So that's what maceration is, but we'll go into detail about that later on. All right, next slide, please, Claire. Okay, so the first one that we're going to look at, which is called mechanical skin stripping. And the keyword is in there, which is mechanical. So this affects the top layer of your skin. If you remember our three layers, if you just remember it as like um, a cake with three layers. So your top layer is affected mostly by what's called mechanical skin stripping. So this can happen um, if you're removing your base plates or your adhesives, um, not the way that you're supposed to. So sometimes you want it to be over and done with quickly and then just take it off like that. So when you when you keep doing that, just constantly applying stripping, applying stripping, we're doing this mechanical skin stripping. So then this leads to your skin just being so irritated. And again, it takes away that protection function from your skin. And also this can happen if we're not using the right products for taking off our base plates. So I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir about taking off base plates. Um, you have your products that you have to specifically use at every single stage to make sure that um, removal of the base plate is gentle and it's pain free as well so that we can preserve our skin. So if you want to know whether um, it is mechanical skin stripping that you actually have, when you look at your skin, you will find that it looks quite red and there's a like a shiny sheen to it. And that can tell you that possibly you're taking off your base plate um, in, in a way that strips the top skin layer. So what can happen with this is that your skin might be really warm to the touch and it just feels red and sore. And in some severe cases, you might find that you get blistering as well and fluid will start accumulating under the skin and then you get a bit of swelling. So with all these things happening to your skin, there is a high risk of infection uh, because we've lost, again, that protective top layer of our skin. And because it's exposed, if you're going to put a base plate on top of this irritated skin, it will just irritate it even further, just making the situation even worse. And there is a chance of what's called um, transepidermal water loss. It's just a fancy word to say that you're losing a lot of moisture from the skin because we've stripped it. So it's just losing a lot of moisture. So you might find that the area is just seeping up fluid and it will get dry as well. Um, Jess, have you got anything to say about this section? Yeah, I think, like I said earlier, I think this is probably one of the most common things we see, isn't it, Masvita? I Absolutely. think, um, you know, everyone's trying to get to grips with their new routine. And yeah. I think from our personal experience, you know, being out in the community with, with laryngectomy um, mm. patients and, and helping them with their routines, I think that um, 
it's really fair to say that it, it really truly is you know not one size fits all and there's one routine that would work perfectly for someone mm -hmm. and then somebody else they might still experience skin stripping even though it's working for somebody else so I think yeah. it really and I think it's you know I think we'll talk about kind of processes and how to kind of overcome these things later but mm. I think it's it really is one of these main um uh things where you know we really have to strip the routine right back don't we and really have to pin we, we have to pick out every single step-by-step -step routine exactly. uh, part of the routine sorry to to mm. figure out what is the problem like what is causing yeah. the problem is it the adhesive? Is it the technique? Is it the prep? Is it the, yeah. you know, there's so many contributing factors. So I think yeah. that, you know, um, I know that it's it's a very, very frustrating um, mm. thing to deal with for our patients. And, and yeah. it feels like there's no end in sight sometimes. But, yeah. you know, we'll see later on, won't we, that there, there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. If it's if it's treated properly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. All right. Next slide, please, Claire. So the next thing that we're going to look at is maceration. So if you remember, I said maceration. Um, if you don't have a stoma, that's that process where if you sat in the bath for too long, your skin starts to get wrinkly. So maceration happens when there's prolonged exposure of the skin to moisture. So for people with laryngectomies, how this can happen is if you're experiencing excessive mucus, so constant contact of the skin to mucus can just lead to what's called maceration. And also um, excessive sweating as well. You can find that we've got sweat glands everywhere on our skin. And sometimes it can happen that all your sweating happens here. And in addition to that, if you're wearing a base plate for a very, very long time, let's say maybe four days, God forbid, that you wear your base plate for four days and you've got um, sweaty skin or you're experiencing excessive mucus, that will all get trapped behind the base plate and then your skin is just exposed to all that moisture and then it just leads to maceration which you can see in those images that is exposed um that is um prolonged exposure to moisture and also another thing to note um as much as nebulizers are amazing back to what are called back-to-back -back nebulizers which is a nebulizer one after the other um let's say over half an hour and you're continually having them back to what we call back to back that just exposes your skin to a lot of moisture as well and if you think that if you're doing that over a long period of time it can just break down your skin and this just makes your skin high risk again to bacterial as well as fungal infections and these infections can get really worse and you can end up actually being quite unwell and um, having sepsis. So with this cycle, just looking at it, how maceration happens, the first stage is that your skin is exposed to high levels of moisture, which I did mention, like your mucus, sweating, and the skin will become soft. It will become even pale. It might become swollen and wrinkled. So these things can all happen at the same time, or you can have two of them happening or just one of them happening. So it's just worth looking out for um, any of these signs. And once this happens, um, this reduces the protection function of your skin. So you're more prone to infections. And also, if you're starting to have wounds around the area, wounds in their nature as they heal they start producing a fluid and then again now we've got this fluid um, just making the situation even worse so looking at this cycle if we can break one of these things it means we're on our way to sorting out any issues related to maceration Jess have you got anything to add in regards to maceration 
No, again, I think it just comes, you know, we we harp on about routine and finding the right products, don't we? And I think this mm. is, you know, something where maceration, especially when, you know, we have patients that get the, the mucus trapped between yeah. their base plate and the skin. It's mm. really common or it's not really common, but it, 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 you know, we, it feels it feels common to us, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think that is just to highlight really that, you know, we really need to work on finding the most suitable product you know Absolutely. that will fit you and will work for you you know it may be a different type of base plate that yeah. that provides a closer fit to to the stoma or it might yeah. not be you know it might be something different it might not even be a base plate so it's just worth considering those kinds of things yeah. um if if you're experiencing maceration yeah definitely yeah. thank you next slide please claire so as we said, maceration involves excessive moisture, which is counterproductive to skin healing. But in general, we do say hydrating a wound is a positive thing for skin healing. But once we have excessive moisture, all those fluids, because they contain um, things like enzymes and plasma, they can just eat away at the skin and just make the situation even worse. And as I said before, infections will happen. And there's also pain and discomfort. And that's the last thing you need um, as you're living with your laryngectomy. All right, next slide, please. So the next thing that we're going to look at, sorry if I seem like I'm just telling you problem after problem after problem, I promise you at the end, we're going to have some solutions and some tips <laughs> on how to manage all these things that we're talking about. <laughs> right, Jess? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so with irritant contact dermatitis, um, it is an, what's called an inflammatory response um, to when your skin has been um, damaged, especially the outermost top layer of our skin. And like a large percentage of skin issues, like 80%, it is contact dermatitis. So like I said, there is damage to the uppermost skin layer. If you remember our three skin layers and there is um, a change to like how our skin is what people call your pH, so which is like how acidic or how not acidic something is. So it changes in our skin. And once that changes, our skin can no longer protect us again from things like um, bacteria and viruses and fungus as well. And again, we do lose moisture from the skin, so it will get dry. So the way that we would know, looking at that picture, I know it's not a stoma, but it's just to demonstrate what contact dermatitis is. As you can see, that person was wearing a plaster and you can literally tell that the plaster was a rectangle. So where the skin, where the plaster was in contact with the skin, it irritated exactly where it was placed. So if you can imagine, when you wear your base plate um, around your stoma, if it's irritant contact dermatitis, you will see the outline of your base plate and you will know ah, this is it. So it's a cycle as well. Your skin is exposed to the irritant, which is either the glue on the base plate. So we've exposed our skin to that. Our skin doesn't like it. And then an inflammatory response happens which then disrupts how our skin works. And then it just makes things worse from there. Next slide, please, Claire. So again, looking at irritant contact dermatitis, you can tell that um, the person in the top picture, they were wearing a band aid or a plaster and you can literally see the outline of that. And that is irritant, contact dermatitis. So it's to make things even more complicated, it's split into what is called acute and then there's what is called chronic. So with the acute one, which is the top picture, your skin will usually look swollen and it might look 
quite red and you might get some blisters as well. And the most telltale sign is that there is a defined border around. So again, just imagine your base plate around your stoma. There will be a defined border around where the base plate um, or your adhesive was stuck on. And usually it will settle within days or a few weeks once you stop wearing the adhesive or the base plate. But when it comes to what's called chronic irritant contact dermatitis, the skin will usually be dry. It might be scaly and you might see that there is cracking. But with both situations, there is redness because it's an inflammatory response. So your skin will be red. Um, you won't see much blistering because this has been happen happening for a, for a long time and it can carry on happening um, for quite some time, um, even after you've stopped wearing the base plate. Next slide, please, Claire. So of the contact dermatitis situations, there is two variations. So the one that we've talked about initially was irritant contact dermatitis. And the second one is allergic contact dermatitis. And Unlike irritant contact dermatitis, this happens in like 20% um, of um, situations. Unlike irritant where it's 80%, so you can see that um, only a, a small portion of people experience allergic contact dermatitis. So how this happens, this is actually an immune response. So it's an allergic reaction. So it will present as an allergic reaction. So there is instant blistering happening. And again, an inflammatory response happens, um, which is where your skin is more um, red. And also you might find that there is weeping there. It's, it's not easy actually to, to tell whether it's allergic or irritant because they can actually look the same. So being able to tell the difference will uh, need the support of your clinician. So it's either your, your GP, your SLT, your clinical nurse specialist or your ATOS nurse, um, because what they will take into account is your medical history, whether you're allergic to certain things so that we can look at all the products that you use to, to see if any of the ingredients are part of the things that you're allergic to. And also you might end up needing um, a skin allergy test where they actually test you against all the products that you use to see whether one of them is triggering what's happening with your skin. So it's not easy to tell whether it's allergic or if it's irritant, but you will find that um, with allergic, the border that we talked about, when you put your base plate on, it's not as much of a defined border. It will go outside of the border if it's an allergic um, contact dermatitis situation. Um, I hope I'm explaining it um, clear enough. Um, if anyone wants um, um, further clarification for that, you can just put a question in the in the chat box to say I didn't understand this and then we can go back to it later on at the end. Um, Jess, have you got anything to add? Um, I think, I mean, obviously um, I, I've personally suffered with contact dermatitis on my hands when I was training mm. actually and and um, I remember that I was I was specifically told that I might actually have to rethink my entire career, but wow. it turns out that we found we actually it was allergic. It ended up being allergic contact dermatitis, and I was allergic to the gloves. Um, yeah. It was a mixture of kind of allergy to the gloves, but also not drying my hands properly. Yeah. Even though at the time I remember being like, "Nope, I'm washing my hands. I'm drying them fine." But actually, mm. when we kind of dug a bit deeper, I really wasn't drying my hands properly, and mm. uh, and that was something I learned very very early on in my training. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know how you're explaining that with contact dermatitis, you know, mm. it can, it can uh, create, it will kind of create the border and the pattern of the base plate. Mm. Um, that can also happen with maceration. So I wondered, you know, if you could tell everybody if there is a kind of a, a way to 
decide whether it's skin stripping or whether it's um, contact dermatitis, you know, because they both, you know, like you said, we, we they both have the, the defined ring around them. Um, yeah. So... So the main difference is that you would see if it's a defined border and then you look at the skin, if it's skin stripping, you will find that you've lost the top layer of your skin because of the action of removing it like that. And you still have the defined border. If it's with maceration where we're exposed to moisture, you find that in addition to the border, the skin looks quite soggy and wet and it's got that pale color Mm -hmm. and with allergic you might have the defined border but that border will extend out a little bit because it's an allergic reaction whereas with contact it's just where it's placed yeah so with the with the contact dermatitis and the Mm. the skin stripping specifically yeah you know uh, because with the, am I right in thinking that the uh, skin stripping will have that shiny kind of texture yeah. almost, whereas yeah. the dermatitis probably won't have a shiny texture? Yeah. Is that yeah. probably fair to say? It is. It is. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah. With the yeah. skin stripping, you're constantly doing that. Whereas yeah. with contact, it's just, but I think you can have a combination. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because so I think this is. Yeah. We're really, you know, this is why everyone needs, this is what we said earlier, isn't it? Everyone's so yeah. individual and, and everyone will need an individual assessment. So it's not fair for yeah. us to, you know, make a blanket statement. But typically speaking, Absolutely. I think that, yeah, these are some common ways to to decide what it might be. But yeah. absolutely go and go and seek further advice if you think that you're suffering with with one or, or both mm. or multiple of these these kind of um, skin issues. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Claire. Um, Next slide, please. So we're also going to look at some contributing factors um, to skin irritation. And these factors can be um, radiation related for those um, who have radiation as part of their treatment plan. And there is also um, factors that are um, associated with aging as well as um, your medical history. And as I mentioned initially, your topography, that is like your anatomy, like your your curves and your contours. So we're going to look at these three factors. Next slide, please. So dermatological issues, they do happen in a lot of patients. And as you can see, it's like 85 to 95% of patients Um, who receive radiation treatment, who do go through skin issues. And they are expected um, during radiotherapy, but there are some people who are lucky enough to not experience any skin issues um, during or after radiotherapy. But we're going to talk about a few of the things that can happen so that if you haven't had your radiotherapy yet, you might be able to look out for these things. So one of the things is what is called erythema. Erythema. I pronounce it differently, I think. <laughs> I think I, I pronounce it erythema, but it is pronounced so exactly. many different ways across the medical yeah. field. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But Fancy word for... Yeah, for being hot to the yep. touch <laughs> and with redness as well. So yeah. the way that you would know, the skin is just hot really hot to the touch and you can see that it's quite red and this is happening because you've had um, this radiation therapy happening here so all your what are called your basal cells that have been damaged by the radiation they're starting to come to the surface like that so that they can just be shed and then your skin in response is just producing um, what are called um, histamines so that will make your skin look quite red and it will make it really warm so that's one of the things that can happen as well so if you do have radiotherapy and you start seeing that your skin is starting to get really warm to the touch and red just know that um, it's the radiation this is what's happening and we're going to talk about what you can do about that later on and in some people they will um, start to experience what's called dry skin peeling and 
it's in the word itself. The skin is really dry. It starts to get flaky and then it's really itchy and you might get skin thickening as well because your cells are coming to the surface. So you they're dying off like your cells are dying off. So your skin becomes really thick. Um, so um, this process is happening because new cells are coming in before like the old ones that have been damaged by the radiotherapy have been shed. Um, and some people do experience um, the opposite, which is moist skin peeling. So the skin is really wet and moist and then it's starting to break down and you might see that your skin is starting to weep as well and it's just trying to just slough off so all these three things can happen you can have one of them or you can have you can experience all of them so just know that if it does happen to you you're not um, the only one, as we can see, 85 to 95 percent of patients experience this. And it's just part of the process um, after radiotherapy. Quite painful, isn't it? Sometimes I think mm. you, we can see this picture here that's on that slide. And, yeah. you know, that does look like a pretty severe case um, yeah. of, you know, radiotherapy treatment. And um, and and there are things to be done, like like we say, so we'll, we'll chat over some, some of those shortly. Yeah, yeah. Next slide, please, Claire. So we're going to talk about aging factors um, as well as medication and other comorbidities. So as we age, our skin does become a bit more fragile. So we find that um, the, the skin becomes a lot thinner because we don't have much of that collagen and that elast um, elastin that we were talking about. And this just makes our skin even more vulnerable. So you can imagine if your skin is really, really thin and you're having to wear base plates or adhesives, just imagine how gentle you have to be with your skin. So as we get older, that's one of the things that we need to keep in mind. Um, and looking at other factors, and um, there's things like allergies, you might be allergic to one ingredient that's in the adhesives. So that's why we say it, if you're experiencing something like allergic contact dermatitis involving your clinicians and just being able to express what you're going through, they will be able to find a solution, whether you might need um, patch testing or looking at your medical history to say, oh, you're already allergic to this. This base plate actually contains this thing. And then we know how to deal with that. And there is things like um, autoimmune conditions. Some people do have psoriasis already. So you can imagine if you have that skin condition and then having to wear base plates, how very gentle and careful you have to be. And we also have things like diabetes. If you're diabetic, um, your healing process is a lot slower and circulation is also compromised in patients who've got diabetes. So those are things that we need to keep in mind once we start to have skin um, issues. Um, there might be things like eczema and also like your ethnic origin as well. Those things um, do count, especially when, with things like sun exposure, your skin becomes more sensitive and there's also things like nutrition and hydration. Um, if you're not having enough nutrition, that can compromise your skin health. And also hydration, your skin might get really dry. So we need to be thinking about that and your medications as well. So that's why it's important um, to reach out to your clinicians, um, like your clinical nurse specialist, your ATOS nurse, your surgeons, your doctors, your GP, and once you start experiencing skin health issues, because it may be one of these things um, rather than the product that you're using. And I think, you know, something we speak about quite a lot, Masvita, isn't it, is that, um, and that that is not kind of, uh, we feel it is not kind of, um, maybe displayed well enough um, in a lot of places is that, you know, th these kind of uh, skin reactions pr can present very, very differently on different skin mm -hmm. tones, can't they? Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. it's just learning about your own skin tone and, and your yeah. skin type as well yeah. um, and understanding that, you know, 
somebody that's very very fair skinned you know the redness is is mm. quite obviously red whereas mm. somebody that has a deeper skin tone it may not be red like we can see on on a, on a fairer skin tone so mm. learning learning your skin type and 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 how that reaction looks for you mm. is also really really important isn't it it's um absolutely yeah. you know we've definitely had a few patients over over the years who who have been experiencing one or a few of these things and actually they hadn't recognized it um yeah. you know it because because the examples are, are all on much fairer skin tones so yeah. yeah it's something to be very aware of um true. and learn very that true. yeah thank you jess um next slide please claire so we're going to look at stormal topography as well and I think this is one of the things that's really, really difficult um, for people with the laryngectomy, especially um, if voicing is dependent on you wearing a base plate. So having a deep and irregular shaped stormer can lead to you having to wear your base plate, uh, well, replace your base plate quite a few times throughout the day simply because you want it to stick on really well and be able to voice. And then another thing would be you looking at base plates that are more sticky, um, that is with a stronger um, adhesive, which might not be the thing for you if you're wanting a stronger adhesive that might irritate your skin. And if you're having to change the base plate again several times throughout the day, that can compromise your skin. So we we do have um, patients who actually use um, additional glue to their base plates to be able to make it stick better because maybe your stoma is quite deep and then you've got curves here and there simply because of how your surgery was done and you're having to use an adhesive glue. That means you get more stickiness as well. And as much as that's um, the idea, to be able to have a good um, seal around. We have to think about how are we going to take the base plate off? Have we got the patients to do it properly and make sure that our skin is really nice and healthy? And also, um, it can be frustrating trying to find the base plate that suits how your stoma is. And you may find that some people will just give up altogether on that, meaning they'll stop using HMEs or filters, and then that will lead to your pulmonary health, like, like your lung health being compromised, and then you're having mucus production, and then the cycle begins, mucus, skin irritation. So it's like a vicious cycle, and I know it can be quite frustrating for a lot of patients. Mm, definitely, and I think, you know, the the stomas that are very very deep um mm. you know it is it is a process isn't it it is a tricky a tricky uh solution to find uh, sometimes yeah. mm. um it might be you know sometimes it's not even a base plate sometimes you know people with very deep stomas you know aren't able to use base plates mm. um uh but you know, again, there are, you know, lots of different other options that, that can mm -hmm. be trialed. But again, please, you know, it is we, we do really, really kind of um, empathise with you guys or sympathise with you guys mm -hmm. that, you know, that it is a long, it can be a long drawn out process to find a solution. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, keeping pushing on is is definitely better than giving up altogether, because like yeah. Masvita says, then you know your your pulmonary health suffers and and then mm. and then subsequently you know just your day to day suffers you know you're Absolutely. not sleeping properly you're not you mm. know you're coughing throughout the day even more and and mm. you're finding yourself in these situations where maybe your mucus is thicker because you're not wearing your hme and it's mm. it's a real real domino effect isn't it and it or it can yeah. be a real domino effect um you know like everyone there's some people just have a deep stoma and get on fine yeah. and some people some people just, you know, struggle a bit, a bit more. So it really, you yeah. know, really don't give up on finding what is what works for you. Um, yeah. And there's lots and lots of resources that, that we can help you guys with. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. Next slide, please, Claire. 
So still talking about topography, um, there was a survey done in 2019 and it, it's it's quite a large percentage to say 54% um, of the people who took part in the survey actually identified themselves as having a deep or a very deep stoma. So if you can look at the at the pie chart, which is divided into three sections, you can see that in the red zone, 40% said they had a deep stoma, whereas 14% um, said that their stoma was very deep. Um, with 46% saying they had a flood stormer. But it just goes to show you that there is quite a varied like um, number of patients with different stormers. So that all comes with different issues altogether. So you might be in a situation where you're comparing yourself to somebody to say, but oh, why isn't this happening to them? Why aren't they having skin issues? But it's because stormers vary. It's a huge number, isn't it? You know, over mm -hmm. half, over half, you know, identify as, you know, mm. deep or very deep stomas. And yeah. so you guys aren't alone if you are experiencing a deep stoma. I know it's, you know, it might not be wholly helpful to say that, but I think that it's reassuring in some capacity that you, you are not alone and, and that we can yeah. find some solution, even if it may take a bit longer. So. Yeah, true. Great. Thank you. Next slide, please, Claire. So all in all, we've gone through all this to say that skin irritation will affect um, how consistent you are with your HME and how effective it can be if you do wear it 24-7. And if all this is compromised, then that means your lung health, your pulmonary health is impacted. And ultimately, your quality of life, because quality of life means um, a lot of different things. For someone, quality of life is being able to walk to the paper shop without having to cough, clear their secretions. And it can mean having a meal with your family without having to go and clear mucus and things like that. So quality of life is different for everybody. But all in all, the skin issues can impact quality of life because irritation and discomfort of the skin will lead us to wanting to take a break from using our HMEs or our filters. And then again, everything is just impacted. So next slide, please, Claire. So the next one, we're going to be talking about managing skin irritation and improving HME use for better lung health. And at this point, I am going to hand over to our wonderful lead nurse, Jess. Thank you very much. Go on to the next slide, please, Claire. Thank you. So, I mean, I think, you know, we've kind of um, uh, started talking about these sorts of things throughout the discussion so far. But, you know, establishing the root cause of skin issues is so, so, so important. And, you know, I touched on it earlier that you know, we really have to strip back this routine, the entire routine and look at the entire process of, you know, the product you're using, the way that you're prepping your skin, the, the you know, what you're using to prep your skin. Um, again, like I said earlier, I suffered really badly with contact dermatitis and I was like, no, nope, I'm definitely drying my hands properly. And, and I wasn't. And, you know, it's, um, I think even though we think we are doing things sometimes, you know, I think there is nothing like a, a really in-depth assessment with somebody that is is very well versed in this in this area um, mm -hmm. that can that can really kind of assess that for you and with you um, and uh, and kind of troubleshoot and find find this root cause because if we don't know the root cause, you know, it's like it's like being allergic to something, isn't it, must be to like, if you don't know what you're allergic to, you know, you have to eliminate all these things and then reintroduce and, and see which one is the trigger. So this is why we say that it can be quite a lengthy process to resolve skin issues sometimes. Um, but it's OK. It's, it is time consuming sometimes, but it's OK. And, and that's kind of we'd rather take it step by step so that we can 
easily identify exactly what the problem is. So like like we said earlier, is it the glue in the adhesive? Is it that you're, you know, ripping off your adhesive without, you know, proper removal? Um, I think that something that I come across quite a lot, and I don't know if, if you do as well, Masmita, is that some people will say, you know, yep, I'm using remover, but actually it's a skin barrier. Or, yeah. you know, and or the other way around. Or, yes, I'm prepping my skin with barrier, but actually mm. what they are doing is using the remover. So they're kind of getting the products a little bit confused, yeah. um, thinking that, you know, thinking that they're using the right one. But actually, you kind of picked up the wrong packet by mistake and, and kind of not recognised it. So there's there's simple mm. things like that that mm. that um, sometimes can be identified. Um, mm. uh, but again, You've got different adhesives have different types of glue and different types of materials in them. So, um, you know, if anyone uses the the nighttime base plate, um, that is something called a hydrogel adhesive, um, and that is kind of designed to recover um, the skin uh, whilst wearing it as well. Um, which is why it's quite it's quite a cooling effect. Um, and you know, hydrogel is is designed to be removed with water, so mm. that you know, if you are allergic to um, the the removers or the you know the the other products that we have to that are available to to remove these these um, base plates, then you know, a hydrogel might be a good option. You know, mm. they're not they're not as durable or, or life lifelong in in some cases are they again particularly if you're a sweaty person and mm. and this you know it's removed with water so you sweat and then and then the, then it will kind of have a chance of being removed a bit quicker than than something like the sensitive uh, hydrocolloids that are in the sensitive face plates. Um, mm. So it's, it's about exploring those kinds of things and what is working for your skin. Um, something that we do quite often is patch testing, isn't it? So we'll cut a little bit mm. of a base, base plate off, stick it near where, where it will be, be utilised or sometimes it can just be on your arm to see if you are reacting to, to mm. any of those materials. Um, mm. But, you know, as always, like we always say, raise these concerns with your clinicians. It's so, so important. Um, you know, it might not be, you know, depending on who your clinician is, it might, you know, skin may not be their their area of expertise, but they certainly, you know, if you're voicing it to them, they certainly will have contact with somebody that, you know, that it is their area of expertise. So, um, you know, if it's a speech and language therapist, you go and see, that might not be their their true bag so but they might have a, a clinical nurse specialist they work with or they might have a mm. tissue viability nurse that they have connections with um so there is always somebody that they can they can point you to if they are you know not maybe the the best person for for this um for the problems that you're experiencing but um mm. you know they might also be just the right person so it depends on what hospital you're under who you see and and all the rest of that kind of stuff but please please speak to your clinicians and then from there we can you know they can try and figure out what the best next steps are for you guys and mm. um as i say you know might need some you might actually we'll look at some pictures shortly um uh some case studies that we've done um but it might actually be that you do need some medication whether that's a, a topical cream whether that's you know antihistamine tablets it's there are so many things that that could be tried and tested um and i think sometimes maybe maybe that it's not tapped into enough i feel sometimes you know mm. and um, and that actually knowledge is power. So hopefully you can take something away from today and 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 feel empowered uh, um, and and uh, educated to go and, and start a conversation um, with with your your clinician at the hospital. So mm -hmm. if we pop onto the next slide, Claire. So this is just a quick video um, that we're going to watch. We're going to press play and. Um, uh, we'll see this lovely gentleman removing his his base plate. Um, again, this is what works for him, um, and you know we would consider his technique pretty pretty gold standard, I think, wouldn't we? Yeah. Um, but again, like we've been saying throughout this, it may not be you know the right option for you, but this is what we we would love you know all of our patients to be doing instead of just ripping off that base plate. Mm -hmm. It's always kinder to to melt that. Um, adhesive away. So Claire, if we press play, please. So obviously this gentleman is using an adhesive remover. 
and there's different types you know if, if one remover doesn't work for you there's different different types of remover that you can try um so you know slightly different ingredient mix and all of those types mm -hmm. of things so you can see that he's you know he has got a little bit of redness there hasn't he but i think that we can class that as quite normal an mm -hmm. element you know having a having something stuck to your skin all the time is essentially a foreign body <laughs> so you know your skin your skin you know may be a little bit red but i think what we're trying to uh get at he's putting the skin barrier on there so we know that he's prepping his skin properly but i think what we're trying to get at like must be to said earlier if your skin is hurting if it is sore if it is irritated you know all of those signs that come with redness you know there are there are times where you might just have a little bit of red skin and it's not causing you any problems um mm. and that's also okay so it's just about identifying you know your skin and and knowing your skin really but we can see here that he popped his base plate on yeah his hme and it's mm -hmm. he makes it look so easy doesn't he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you claire if we pop on to that next slide <clears throat> aha perfect so these i love these pictures for so many reasons mm -hmm. um so these are some case studies that we we have done, you know, ourselves. This is um, from our lovely field nurse Ashley, um, who covers the the southwest of England, um, mm -hmm. and this is one of her patients um, who has, you know, these everyone photo today has consented to have their um, pictures used for uh, education purposes. So um, this is uh, the picture on the left hand side. You can see um, that this is how she found. Um, her patient when she went to the first visit um, and actually I think you know it was discovered that this is actually a fungal infection right Masvita yeah. um, and there were quite a few contributing factors to this patient I think his his house was quite you know quite warm and quite moist um, not very well ventilated um, and um, we can see that you know his his skin is reacting to his base plates um, uh, so this was, yeah, Ashley took this photo on the left-hand side when she very first visited and you can see how red and raw and it looks painful, doesn't it? It looks mm -hmm. really, really sore. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Maz, do you have any more information? I think this, um, uh, on, it, on this. Yeah, like you said, it ended up being a fungal infection, but it led to that because he kept wearing the base plate and he was having moisture from the skin as well as from his environment being trapped behind the base plate. So you can just imagine what was brewing underneath the base mm. plate, which ended up being this fungal infection. And if you look closely, it's quite patchy and you can see where the skin is raised here and there. And this is where, like Jess was trying to stress that speaking to your clinicians is really, really important because you can feel like, oh, I, I don't need to talk to anyone. I'll manage, I'll manage because I don't want to be a pain or a pest mm -hmm. to anyone. But this is why we, your clinicians, are here to support you and to help you troubleshoot with these things so that you don't end up being at a point where maybe this infection becomes even something worse. So it was good that Ashley was able to do this visit at this point mm. uh, where she could turn it around. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, I, I know for a fact what she did here was, you know, obviously inform this patient's main clinician at the hospital and mm. and get got the right cream um, mm. uh, prescribed and, and given to to this patient. Um, and then she kind of went through the process, like we mentioned earlier, of really stripping back that whole routine, didn't she? She yeah. she took everything away, treated the fungal infection first. Um, mm. So, yes, you know, there was some compromise on on wearing a HME for a certain amount of time, but it was, as we can see through the process of these photos, for the greater good. So I think, you know, it was a real clinical decision to to decide that, you know, what to treat first and how to treat it. And actually that, OK, getting rid of the HME and getting rid of the the gold, what we, you know, what we always bang on about is the gold standard, you know, wearing a HME 24-7, we know mm -hmm. there's research behind it is so, so, so important for the lungs. However, 
you know, how are you supposed to wear that 24-7 whilst healing the skin, whilst, yeah. you know, yeah. curing a fungal infection? So yeah. there's a lot of kind of moving moving factors during this um, this treatment for this patient. But mm. as you can see, I think this, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how long we're between photos. Um, um, I think she, she did four weekly visits, so I think it uh -huh. took about a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can see that first one, how raw it was. That second one, we can see there's some improvement, um, mm. some, some big improvement. Um, but we can still see there is still, I know it's a fungal infection, but there is still a little bit of that shine to the skin that we're talking about, yeah. isn't there? And yeah. so there's a, it's multifactored um, mm. uh, on this. So, uh, so she's stripped back all the routine. She's really worked hard with, with this pa patient to, to, discuss the routine and really implement you know what you know the steps that, that were needed you know she mm -hmm. she ensured that the, the skin's being dried properly that is such a big factor allowing the time between you know yeah. removing the base plate cleaning the skin mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, the cleaning of the skin is a step that is really commonly missed because yeah. people think oh I've used the wet adhesive remover to take off yeah. the the um, base plate so I'll let that dry and then I'll put some skin barrier over the top of that and I'll let mm -hmm. that dry but that skin cleaning is so 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 vital um, and so she really really worked hard and, and really mm -hmm. reinforced all of those major major steps um, and as you can see there at the end I mean what a result that's it's um, incredible um, mm -hmm. and if I'm not mistaken it's still getting on very well to this day I yeah. think. Can I just add as well, Jess, um, mm. people might say with the HME, oh, you could still wear an HME with a tube, but mm. we, not everyone can tolerate a tube. And I think in yeah. this case, he could not tolerate wearing a tube so that he could wear his HME. So you can see yeah. that HME use was compromised. Mm, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're so right. You know, of course, if they can tolerate a tube or a button or something, but, mm. you know, this redness was so... Well, all the way up to the the opening of the stoma isn't it Absolutely. it's just not yeah. sometimes you do just have to make a decision um mm. but again you know make it with your clinician or whoever is helping you through this skin skin journey um mm. to decide what is the safest option you know it might be that we do have to just park the hme just for a short time and it yeah. will always be the shortest time possible that we possibly okay. can make it because we do not want that hme off really um it is a really really last resort option that we 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 tend to do but yeah i mean the, the results speak for itself in this photo don't they and and yeah. i mean it's uh it's just testament to to the knowledge and and uh the work that that gets put in so if we pop onto the next slide claire and here is just another one. Maz, do you want to talk about this one a little bit? This is a... Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So this gentleman, it was a bit of a, um, a, a difficult case for Ashley. It was Ashley as well. That's her patient. <laughs> um, only because um, the gentleman has dementia. So he had been self-caring um, when she did her first visit. And he was wearing um, a base plate that's called Stability. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that one. It's got like a hard um, plastic anchor in the middle. Mm. So as, if you look at the first picture right at the top, just underneath his neck, there's sort of a cut there. So because he was placing the base plate um, not really well it just ended up digging into his skin so he ended up with a bit of pressure damage there in addition to that bit of redness that he was experiencing so it was a difficult case because every time Ashley would go in to say um, let's change the routine let's move away from base plates and let's recover your skin and start using alternatives um, she would come back and he's back on his base plates. So it just took quite a bit of time. So with this case study, it just shows you that um, pl placement of the base plate is just as important so that you don't end up with not just skin irritation, but pressure damage as well. Um, mm. As you know, base plates do have that hard ring in the middle. And if you do miss 
um, sort of like the, the bullseye of the stoma, you can end up just having pressure damage because our necks are not fixed. We do move around side to side and when we're sleeping, we do move them. So that pressure damage can just happen. So placement um, of the base plate is important. So there was a bit of a setback for him because he had to go off his base plates and then trying to adjust to a new routine um, that was easy to follow for him. But as you can see with the last picture, she was quite successful um, in helping heal that pressure sore and just to maintain the stoma size as well and just to heal the skin as well. So Yeah, I mean, she, you know, like you said, you mentioned that this, this patient particularly um, did have a diagnosis of dementia as well or mm. does have a diagnosis of dementia. So, um, you know, that is an additional kind of tricky factor. Um, mm. So I think it's just to highlight that there are there are so many, you know, so many factors. This is why we always say like one size doesn't fit all and yeah. it's not going to work for everybody. And I know it sounds it sometimes feels like we say it just to say it for sakes. But actually, it you know, it really is so true that, you know, there's so many contributing factors for every individual person as mm. to why something might take more time, why something may be more difficult. But as you can imagine, trying to remember and retain that information that Ashley's been, you know, giving out she's she's done an incredible job here to to help heal this and, and work with the patient and and the clinicians at the hospital so um you know it was a it was a real real good outcome i think um i'm not sure i i i wouldn't be able to say what products he ended up using um but yeah no i can't remember either but um you know you can see you can see the the improvement in in his skin and as you can see on that on that right hand side picture, there is still, you know, a small bit of redness there. Yeah. Um, but uh nothing nothing too crazy. Yeah. I can just see that um Rosamond's got her hand up here. Um Rosamond, I'm going to see if I can unmute you because I'm assuming that this is just based on this particular topic, I think. So let me see if I can allow your mic. Can you try and unmute yourself, Rosamond? Sorry, it was a mistake. Sorry, uh, it was a mistake. Oh, it was a mistake. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm going to pop you back on mute. <laughs> Lovely to hear your voice, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ta, perfect. There we go. OK. Um, so if we pop on to the next slide. So. Um, yeah, so this is, again, kind of uh, reinforcing what we've been discussing. You know, we have to find the root cause and address the skin and the irritation um, to, you know, keep up with the pulmonary health that you've, you've worked so hard post-surgery to, to kind of get back or, you know, develop or improve um, with the use of HMEs. So, it's all all a bit of a cycle, isn't it? And it all can be a bit mm. of a vicious cycle. And that's why kind of breaking breaking that cycle is so, so important. Um, but there are some kind of, uh, you know, the preventative strategies like um, skin friendly change routines, using the right products, um, adhesives that, like we said, the hydrogel provides skin recovery. Um, and, and considering the underlying causes and contributing factors. Um, it's just, yeah, this slide is just to highlight and reinforce everything we've kind of been uh, talking about, that it, it's a mm -hmm. cycle and we need to find out how to break that and how to how to optimise your routine. Mm -hmm. um, and if we pop on to the next slide, please, Claire. Good. So again, uh, another healthy skin is the foundation for good pulmonary rehabilitation and successful voicing. So, you know, if you are a base plate user um, and you do have um, uh, a speaking valve uh, placed, uh, voice prosthesis placed, um, you know, it really is going to be the foundation for for kind of really positive, strong voicing. Um, and so we need to promote, you know, it's down to us to promote this good skin health and, and these good 
kind of techniques and and really try and encourage you you know we we see so many of you out in your homes and and such an array of you some of you you know kind of don't really experience that many problems some of you experience lots and lots of problems and and you know not giving up is is so so important and you know it's easy for us to say we're very very aware of that it's really easy for us to sit here and go you know don't give up keep trying let's try something else and and we do understand how relentless it can feel at times if you are experiencing mm. lots of these problems um you know we do do understand this um but please persist please please persist because you know it's only gonna you know once we do find the right combination for you guys it's only gonna you know improve your life massively and like we say if you are voicing then it's going to be you know much easier for you in 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 that side of things um mm. and uh and just you know i think people are just feeling a little bit happier because they're experiencing less less problems so you know mm. please please don't give up um and please pay attention to your skin i really hope that you know you've learned something from today um that that you can take away um i think you know we haven't got any polls set up today which is a bit unusual for us but i you know i'd be quite interested for you guys to pop something in the chat or the q a to to say whether you have experienced you know one or multiple of these things or to mm -hmm. to say um you know are you still experiencing these things um uh it would be quite interesting to to hear from you guys that are joining today um and if we pop on to the next slide claire we go any questions so this kind of brings us nicely to the close of the presentation mm -hmm. um and um Ms. Victor, i've just seen the time <laughs> yes. no, it's added, no it's added the time that we logged on oh yes perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's got any questions and we've been talking very very um much today so um i know that um there's been a question in the box from from Michael. Uh, Michael, you're a name that I have definitely seen crop up before, and I have a sneaky suspicion. Are you based in Scotland? Because <laughs> my my answers to lots of the questions will always be, see, you know, see your clinician. But also, if you do live in an area where one of our nurses can come out to to kind of do an initial home assessment uh, and then kind of kind of liaise with your your hospital mm -hmm. clinicians. Um, off the back of that that's always a really great place to start um you know we we're able to come to you and then you know we can kind of do a lot of the liaising with the hospital and um but i think you know definitely go and see a clinician so michael has said that um he's got a really really deep stoma yeah and the base plates aren't big enough and i think it's a, again michael like we said throughout today i it's a really difficult one to give you a straight answer for because you say the base plates aren't big enough um you know there are different sizes I, I i don't know whether you mean that you know um does it does it not fit into your deep stoma your deep to, uh, topography it, it's, i'm imagining that it probably doesn't just it just probably doesn't sit well or doesn't stay on um and i'd be interested to i know that you've said you've tried absolutely everything um He's also said, are you going to show what I can do to take off my base plate without taking off my skin? I have tried mm. skin barrier, but it makes it worse. I use night base plates, but taken off, it leaves the adhesive on the skin and it won't clean off no matter what I use. And that's really interesting, Michael. I'm, mm. I'm quite surprised to hear that about the night base plate. Um, but, you know, like we've said today, um, I'm not sure you know, from reading the message, you've said you've tried skin barrier. Is that to remove the base plate? Is that to, you know, prep your skin? Obviously, we would, you know, that that skin barrier is to prep the skin ready for a new base plate on. But I'm, I'm not able to kind of decipher whether your what your message means in terms of where that skin barrier is placed in your routine. So and I also think with, with, with the night base plate, you wouldn't need um, no. skin barrier. Definitely. So with that mm -hmm. specific hydrogel, you're right, Masvita, you know, you don't need skin barrier because of the, the material that it, that is used. It is specifically developed to cool and, and recover the skin. Um, and if you put a skin barrier between that, you know, it's not going to you're not going to feel the effects. So, um, Michael, I 
like I say, I'm, I've got a funny feeling you might be in Scotland. And if you're not, um, see if you have a nurse in your area that would be able to come out and see you um, or, or kind of touch base with your clinicians to see if they've got someone at the hospital, you know, either themselves or like I said earlier, maybe tissue viability, maybe a clinical nurse specialist. Um, you, you might be able to go and see them for some more information or at least to be pointed in the right direction um, for some help. But I think yeah, definitely a, a visit is is probably the best option for you, Michael. Um, um, I think, um, you know, the nighttime base plate, you're saying that it leaves the adhesive on the skin and it won't come off no matter what, but I think um, water, water is what, what you should remove specifically for the night base plate. Um, everything else we would, uh, most other base plates we would recommend remover um, of some kind, but um, yeah, water, warm water, um, and you can kind of, you know, pop a flannel over the top of a base plate, the base plate initially to kind of just get that top layer nice and warm and malleable, and then you can kind of do the usual, find a little, a little uh, picky bit at the top or around your stoma somewhere to just to initially lift that base plate off and then you can go in with some warm water and and take your time as well I think what's really mm. you know again we appreciate everyone you know you want to go back and, and get on with your, your day and your lives and you want your your routine to be as quick as possible however sometimes you do just have to take that extra five to ten minutes you know to really allow the dry the skin to dry really allow the the peeling off process to be a bit slower um you know i think in reality if you can allow that extra additional time to ensure that everything is done you know as as close to perfection as it can be um then you can be absolutely dead certain that it is not your routine. I think that's what's really, really common, like we've said throughout today, isn't it, Maz, is that, mm. you know, even though people go, yep, I'm trying that, yep, I've done that. And and sometimes it takes one person to come in and go, oh, actually, let's look at maybe leaving a little bit longer between the drying phases before applying your next product or before mm. applying your next base plate or, you know, so what we want is a remover. We want to clean the skin do not forget to clean the skin after you've removed your initial base plate mm -hmm. allow that to dry get a little fan get you know do whatever you need to do let that skin thoroughly dry so that it is dry to the touch and and there is no kind of moisture on there um, because what's going to happen you're going to put a new base plate on and then you're going to experience irritation mm -hmm. you know all the things we discussed today maceration all those kinds of things so yeah. Um, any other questions? Jazz yeah. has said. Yeah. What's Jazz said? Uh, when you say take a break from HME during nighttime, what exactly do you use if you cannot take a lorry tube? Mm. Yes, this is a tricky one, isn't it? Again, it's not one size fits all, unfortunately, <laughs> but there are, you know, I don't know whether a button, you know, sometimes people get on much better with a with a small button that just sits inside the opening. Mm. If you are somebody that just cannot tolerate anything in or around the opening of your stoma, you know, that, that rim of the stoma can be super, super sensitive. Um, but um, there's a few different options. Uh, some some people will go and use a bib. You know, it's not. We know that it's not the uh, maybe the best uh, form of humidification, but it does offer some support, particularly overnight. You know, if you're having skin uh, irritation and you're kind of making you're making that decision to take a break just while the skin heals, I think something like a bib would be. Uh, an okay and appropriate interim just while your skin is healing. It's definitely not what I would consider a long-term solution, but it, it's definitely an option if you are one of those people that are, you just cannot tolerate it. You know, I, I understand we've got lots of patients, haven't we, that, that mm. just cannot, they just can't, you know, it's like it makes them cough, it, it's sore, it's uncomfortable, it's, yeah. So have you got anything further on that, Maz? 
No, I was just going to agree with you that if mm. you can't tolerate a lorry tube or a stormer button, um, a bib is your next option and it's mm-hmm. better than nothing at all. Yes. And uh, another trick that a patient of mine does, um, like an old T-shirt, they've cut an old T-shirt, preserved the collar, and then kind of like cut the back and then put a button there. So it's nice and soft because some people don't like the strings of a bib. Mm. So you can just have a T-shirt over it. It's not the best humidification wise, like Mm. um, Jess said, but at least your stoma is covered and it's better than nothing. And it's for Mm. seven or eight hours that you're asleep. Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, with the humid on the humidification uh, point, you know, yes, it's not the most ideal. You know, it's certainly not what we would, you know, recommend in the first instance. It is mm-hmm. definitely certainly kind of a last resort for us personally. And, mm-hmm. and with all the the evidence and the research that's been done. Um, mm-hmm. But you can also kind of do things like place the bowls of water around your house under your radiators. I know yeah. we're in summer right now, but mm-hmm. in terms of humidifying the rest of your house, if you are not able to actively humidify for whatever reason, then that might be a, a kind of interim option. But yeah, it's um, lots and lots of trial and error, as we said, Jazz. So um, I think that, you know, again, speak to your clinicians, mm-hmm. reach out to us, uh, us here at ATOS if you, if you don't have, you know, some people don't see their clinicians anymore, some people... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, have had their laryngectomy for a very long time, and actually, you know, don't really go to the hospital for anything anymore. So, if you're one of those people, then you know, reach out to us, and we're more than happy to to get the ball rolling and help where we can, and and point you in the right direction. And you know, as I say, assessments are always going to be the best way to get to get a solution and and persistence as well. And I think that you know. Some people are, oh, I've tried, tried it for three days. There's no improvement. Mm-hmm. And we're like, no, carry on. It has to carry on. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. OK, well, I think that we have definitely gone over time. Um, but thank you all for joining us this afternoon. It's been really, really nice to see you kind of join and, and participate. And, and here is our... Um, you know, our standard slide if you need any help, um, if you've got any questions. Um, we've got future events coming up. So, you know, take a look online and see what's coming up. Um, and uh, and we're always here to, to kind of point you in the right direction with, with whatever you need relating to your stoma. So, um, yeah, it's been really enjoyable today. Nice to do something a little bit, a little bit more focused on skin, which I feel like we don't do too much. So, uh, yeah, it's been a real, real nice, real nice chat today. So thank you so much for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for coming, Louise. You're very <laughs> welcome. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.